It's been about a month since the last earnings report for Royal Caribbean Cruises, and shares have lost nearly 10% in that time. This performance has severely underperformed the S&P 500. Will this negative trend continue, or is Royal Caribbean due for a breakout? Well, let's take a look. Royal Caribbean did report impressive second quarter 2019 results, wherein earnings and revenues surpassed consensus estimates. Notably, its top and bottom lines outpaced the consensus mark for the third straight quarter. Adjusted earnings of $2.54 per share surpassed consensus estimates of $2.45 per share and also increased 11.9% year-over-year due to higher revenues. Total revenues were over $2.8 billion, also outpacing the consensus mark and increased 20.1% from the year-ago quarter number. This upside can be attributed to higher passenger tickets, as well as onboard and other revenues. Passenger ticket revenues improved 20.6%, and onboard and other revenues increased 18.6%. On a constant currency basis, Net yields rose 9.5% year-over-year. The improvement was driven by growing demand for core products and onboard activities. The only negative appears to be travel restrictions to Cuba. Although expenses continued to increase, even here there was good news as the net cruise costs, which excludes fuel, rose 8.9% on a constant currency basis. This was better than the 10% increase management expected. For the full year of 2019, Royal Caribbean projects earnings of $9.55 per share to $9.65 per share, compared with $9.65 to $9.85 per share previously estimated. The consensus estimate for current year earnings is $9.65 per share, so this is in line. Overall, in-line returns are expected, so nothing extraordinary. But it does seem that the price has not performed. So, let's take a look at our charts. And we're looking at the 20-year monthly chart on Royal Caribbean Cruises Limited. The symbol is RCL for disclosure purposes. I do not hold any shares of RCL at this time. And simply looking at the price chart, since the bottom there in 2011 and 2012, it's been an upward move with the exception of this decline here in 2016. And then, of course, the recent declines there in late 2018 and then the current decline here at this point. But those declines all stayed above the 50 EMA. And so at least that's uh, some progress uh, to look forward to. Moving on down here to the MACD, you can see that there's a bit of trouble with the fast line. There was a little bit too much distance for the fast line to close in and through the slow line, that distance being from here to here. So it got reflected down, but I think it's going to gather its strength here. It's still above the zero line. So I believe that uh, soon enough, it's going to start basing here. Again, not unlike 2016. You've heard that story before, perhaps here on this channel. Down to the histogram, you can see that the uh, the decline in this area here was not as bad as it was back in, say, 2016. And even now, we have improved during this period here. Now we do have a slight reflection down to this point here. But still, we're much better than we were down here in late 2018 and certainly better than we were in 2016. But you can see the improvement going on here in the price rate of change. That consolidation in 2016 looks very similar to the current consolidation. And in my humble opinion, lots of repairs are being done. And in fact, look at the similarity from this move here to this move there and then down to the fast line. Looks very similar from that move there to that move there and then back down to the fast line and it reflected on up from that point. I can't say that's gonna happen here, but I do think we're not far from a turn in the price. You see the same thing there in the RSI. We're at a moderately weak 39.41, but 
but it's staying in this area. It's not breaking down any further. So I think that improvement is not too far off. You can see in stochastics that has shown some improvement with this initial base here, then the upward move. So we're above that 50 or midline with the fast line coming down. I really don't think it's going to pierce uh, very far below that 50 line if it even does that. Moving here into the volume, volume looks fine. And then the Williams definitely showing improvement with the bottom there in 2018 and then that upward improvement. So all the way through the oscillators, there's a lot of good things to take a look at here on uh, RCL. So the only thing you need to do if you're interested in Royal Caribbean cruises, uh, perhaps take a cruise. Or if you want to invest, then conduct your fundamental analysis. And for today, that's Judog Charts. Thank you.